We have definitely not been bored during this shelter in place time. Not a bit. Our project list is about a mile long, so we've been knocking stuff out. Yep, here are some of those projects and modifications. So you know if you've seen a lot of our project videos that we have a lot of things we like to do in terms of projects. And I'm always adding things to his honeydew list. <laughs> That's true. They go straight to the top of the list. Guys, if you know what's good for you, put their stuff at the top of the list. Hmm, really? But, okay, I, I, I okay. The this... first thing we're going to show them <laughs> has been on my list for like two years. Okay, don't do like me. Put it on the top of the list and actually do it. Yeah, I don't know why it took me so long to do that. It was, it, was, it was a bit of work. I don't know. Sometimes there are things I really want done that he puts off and puts off, but then when they're done, he's like, yeah, I should have done this a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, sometimes after you get a project done and you see it in action, you're like, oh, wow, I wish I would have done that sooner. Sometimes he should listen to his wife. Yeah. Well, you know, some of this particular project involves getting out the saw and the tables and buying wood. And it's you want to just show him? Let's just show him. Let's go. All right. Come on in. All right. Project number one, very excited to show you. If I can get the closet door open. That's on, <laughs> that's on my list to adjust the rollers up there. <laughs> it is. Chad made this top shelf bigger. Woohoo! Yeah, if you look, you can see under here. Here, let me turn this on. Show, show where the edge of the old okay, shelf so is. Okay, so can you see here? Yeah. So their shelf that came with the RV was a whopping, like I think this was six or seven inches right here. And we brought it all the way out to 17 inches. So now we have room for all of our hats, which is awesome. Hats and my jeans. And every time we traveled, all the stuff up here would fall down because, you know, it stopped right here. Yeah, it so was now, really, really insufficient yeah, depth before. I think the reason they did that initially was because they thought you would need this cutout to get into your clothes. But as you can see, you don't. This has a little lip on it here, but we don't need. So I'm going to pull that right off. And the trick here was breaking the shelf into two different sections so it could fit it in there. I cut the whole thing to fit from this wall to this wall, front to here, and it, there's no way to get it in there. It's just a, you know, square peg round hole problem. So I cut it into two separate sections so we can put them in like this. And I also didn't go all the way over. I only went as far as I needed to. So I'm just going to put these in here like this. Are you going to keep the shelf that's already in there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's going to actually, I can't take it out. It goes, it's structural oh, okay. for this whole area. But now you can see we went from six inches to 17 oh, inches. That's exciting. I can get more hats. So we can, we can get more hats. <laughs> All I'm gonna do for these is use that 3M two-sided adhesive. Just stick them on there. It's not really that big of a deal. Oh, so you're not gonna screw anything? No, not here, I don't need to. Oh. Yeah, I can't get a drill up in here yeah. anyway. Okay. Um, and I've got a surface that I'm flat on. Yeah. So we'll be good. I'm gonna put that there. And it's just gonna hold some clothes and stuff so it's not super heavy. Exactly. This is not a fancy woodworking project. All these shelves save one are completely hidden with doors closed. I mean, obviously you can see this fell on something and this will be in the back. So I'll put that in the back. But they're not super pretty and they don't need to be. Somebody oh, down here needs up on the she bed. She wants up, she wants to say hi. It's embarrassing, she needs another bath. <laughs> Why are you always dirty? I know, I think that has something to do with our fault. We put up our own little sticky light because with this shelf in, the light that came with the RV kind of blocks you know, it's kind of blocked by this shelf here. So we added our own little push light and Chad building all these shelves for me, which we're gonna show you some more shelves that he just did, really kind of got me inspired to start organizing and doing a little bit of um, modifications myself. Little things like adding more command hooks for hanging my purses and belts because there's this weird space that kind of just comes to a point that I wanted to be able to utilize. And so hanging these hooks here, work wonderfully simple and oh since we're in here we do have a collapsible um, oh, yeah we get asked about that a lot where, yeah. do, we, where do we put our laundry yes yeah, collapsible laundry hamper so project number one loved it it was awesome 
Engraved. Should I just go ahead and show yeah, them yeah. the hooks in here since we're right yeah, here? We'll, we'll work our way to the back. Um, this doesn't have anything to do with shelves, but I added more hooks back here behind the door here and behind the door, which is the bedroom door right here, because we have a lot of jackets and especially it's springtime. So, you know, we have a lot of rain jackets, lighter weight, heavier. This is Chad's coat closet, but you know, they fit nicely in here for the most part. You got to kind of tuck them in when you shut the door. I don't think we ever showed them these little magnets that you did for me. Right? Oh yeah, that's right. It's simple, but it really helps me out. So when I'm trying to switch over the laundry, this thing always, you know, you whack your head, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So Chad just put a magnet here and a magnet right there so that voila. So when I'm swapping out the laundry, I don't get whacked in the head. Nowadays, you could just tuck it behind the jackets. Now I can tuck it behind the jackets. <laughs> yeah. So little simple solutions. And speaking of simple solutions and magnets, I might as well show them the one you did here too. Do you guys ever have an issue with your bedroom door not staying open when you want it to stay open? He just added another magnet right here, as you can see, and right there. And so now, voila. Are you ready to see the next shelves that he did for me? These are the ones that I have been wanting for two years. I'm honestly not quite sure why they built this RV without them, but hopefully they've listened to my advice. We have some footage of before, right? Yes. So this is the before picture. But this this is probably um, my most embarrassing, oh, look how dusty. I wasn't prepared for this, guys. This is the most embarrassing cabinet of any cabinet. You ready? Mm-hmm. I tried, I tried so hard to do the solution by myself and I found these, they were like $4 each and I found them at big lots and they're stackable shelves and it's still a mess. So when I have regular shelves, it's going to be awesome here. Okay. So this was just a big open area and I had found some stackable inexpensive shelves from big lots that I put up here, but it looked messy and it was clumsy and it just was not the way I wanted it. This is still not quite the way I want it because you can still see everything, but we're working on it. And then in here, this was another just big open cabinet. These were not here and it drove me crazy. You can see this little collapsible shelf that I have here. Well, I had about, I think 10 of them in this space. And so Chad built these shelves and now it's amazing. And I can fit so much more in there now. So it's awesome. I initially thought I could just get some 90s and you know just screw them in like just regular shelves but the problem is a lot of these walls are thin and when you drill through them to put a screw in it goes out the other side and sometimes the other side is in a public facing area like right when you walk in the front <laughs> like door right when you walk in the front <laughs> door drilling through this right here the other side of that is right here I can't use any length of screw there. So all I did was get a couple of little one by twos and glue them to the side with Gorilla Glue. I put a little bead down here and one on the end. And I've got a little system here worked out. These are just segments of stir sticks from Lowe's. And I can put this right here along the line that I just made. And then secure it in with a couple of these, like so. That's it. Let that dry for a couple of hours. Double check my measurement, eight and a quarter inches. Boom, boom. Yep, that's looking good. And then I just put the shelves on top of them. It was pretty simple. What I, what I would really like, and I'm not sure if Chad knows that this is still on my honey-do list, but I would love some kind of door. I would like to cover this up. I don't like seeing all the clothes here. It's, it's so much better than it was before, but I would love to have some kind of sliding door or some kind of cabinet doors. I don't know if that's a possibility because I think that's probably a lot more work than putting shelves in. But anyhow, so that's just added to the list, but it's so much better. I love it. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Thanks, babe. Appreciate it. All right, let's go to the bathroom. Well, that, yeah. That sounds weird. <laughs> Another shelf that I have been wanting for a long time that we finally got done, I'm so excited, is this. 
So this was, an, again, another just big, giant space with no shelves in there. And lots of lots of situations like that. In I here. know. I, I guess I, they do it for weight, but, it, you know, I don't know. So I already had some of these shelves and I'm going to put links for everything that I talk about in the description below. So if you want them, you can get them. But I already had some of these shelves that fit perfectly. So I asked Chad to just build one for me so that we can rearrange this area whenever we need to. But now we have several layers and we can fit more stuff and it's not all just jammed in there and you can get to things easier. When you live in 400 square feet, optimizing your space is critical. Right, and then speaking of that, I actually, since I got inspired to kind of reorganize after the shelves were being made, I reorganized down here as well. But I don't know, if, can you see in here? You need me to get out of the way? Well, first of all, we hung our toilet paper here in case anybody's wondering what to do with your TP. This is where we put it. Yeah, when you get your RV, there's no toilet paper hanger, but you do get the little mounts. You, mm -hmm. gotta, you gotta figure out where you want it. Right, so we put it here. But this space has always been awkward for me. And this is my cabinet. This is like, you know, the beauty essential area. But I just had a couple of these stackable shelves left over. So I put them on top of each other. And then I have these organizing little plastic bins are amazing. So everything fits in here nicely. And it's much more organized now. I'm going to show you the cabinet right next door. And I'm going to pull this thing out because I love it. These caddies are great got them on amazon of course but they have all these little compartments they hold my extra contacts and lotions and stuff like that but it keeps everything organized and in place and actually i got my brother one because he uses it in his console for his truck it fits perfectly for him so anyhow i i use some of those leftover stackable shelves again you know i kind of like to use whatever we've got on hand if possible and that's what I did. I mean, these aren't anything spectacular as far as building shelves or anything in here, but it's much better. And then most of you probably already do this kind of stuff. I got these little metallic-y organizers from Amazon, of course, so that it keeps things from falling out when we travel. And then I have some bigger ones that you'll see in the pantry and kitchen, but it fits perfectly for all of Chad's stuff too, that always usually comes flying down on my head after travel day. <laughs> yeah, so, the, I think the trick is probably just measuring the depth Yeah. to make sure you get the right, right stuff. Right, but I'm gonna put links for these and these in the description so that you guys know that they will fit. That's it in the bathroom. Do you want to see what I'm most proud of as far as organizing? <laughs> Should we do that one for now? Or What's do you want to- um, Pantry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll do that one now? Yeah, we're, talk we're doing organizing. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. All right. So this way, please. I am by no means an organizing expert or pro. In fact, I am not good at it. I don't know I that don't that's really, true. I don't really like it. I like things to be organized, but I can't really look at a space and say, this is how it needs to be organized. This but is what needs that, to be done. But that's exactly what you did. Well, it took me two years. <laughs> so, so now you're an expert. You got two years of experience. Uh, yeah. So I finally got the pantry organized in a way that makes me happy and doesn't make me freak out. Now you ever. have to build any shelves. He did not. I honestly, I can't figure out how to make this top shelf more fun functional. Feng shui. Feng shui. Well, this is the area where I keep like the rice and the almond flour and all my special grains and stuff and then I don't want to get rid of this stuff even though I can't eat it anymore. You can. I just can't figure out how to do it so I can... Well, but if it's not something you're going to cook soon, then just let's just get well, rid of it. Well, I, mean, I don't want to get rid of the gluten-free pot. I don't want to get rid of stuff because, you know, we're right in the middle of this virus situation and I don't want to... Put it in a... Stick it in the bag and I don't want to get rid of stuff that we may need in the future. So I guess I'm just... Oh. Put it in the bag and stick it in the back. Yeah, well that doesn't help me with how to lay out this shelf. You know what I mean? You know, right now it's all it's a mess because it's all in bags and it drives me nuts. And I'm short and I can't see it so well. So I'm gonna try coordinating putting everything in these airtight containers that I found on Amazon. Okay, here are a couple more of these metal shelves that I showed you in the bathroom. They have two different colors. I actually like this dark brown one better because it matches you know the the woodworking here but i still had some of these left so i stacked these up of course you've got the shelf liner here 
that everything sticks to so it's amazing nothing slides around we love it i have it lined on everything so i have these shelves placed wherever i feel like i need them with the shelf liner and then i found this set of stackable storage containers you know i have a lot of weird specialty stuff for the weird diet that i have to eat and they all fit in here perfectly of course had to use a label maker to keep everything straight and then i put the stuff that i personally don't eat but chad does up on the top because because you're short because i'm short <laughs> it makes sense right something that i found on amazon that i love i found these baskets on amazon they are the exact size that i was looking for and i kind of got tired of having just a mismatch a bunch of different colors of stuff that's just me it's just gave me anxiety opening that thing up and i had blue and green and all kinds of stuff and they work great for chips or whatever you want to put in them so that stuff doesn't go flying around yeah it's been kind of nice before we used to have the stacks down there and there's kind of a big pile yeah now we've kind of have the currently being eaten in the basket and the ready yeah. to be eaten down below this is mostly coffee stuff this is snacks this is all daisy down here and you know, clearly you can organize it however you want, but I gotta say, we just went grocery shopping like two days ago and stocked up and we still have extra space left. I, I was really, really impressed that the stuff that you did freed up that much space because before know. it was just packed in there. Yeah, yeah, and you can see everything and you can get to everything, which is what I like. And then of course you put these up here really? right away, which yeah. is a, a space saver for sure. The key there is obviously lining these up so they don't Mm -hmm. hit the shelves yeah yeah and you I mean we could have done another one too if you have more spices but um speaking of spices i did find these cute little metal baskets that i like that i put the stuff that i use almost every day i put in here so it's a little bit easier access and they go right up here keeps everything neat and tidy and then when we travel i can just put it on the floor it's easy and since I was inspired to keep organizing, I had a drawer that always drove me nuts, which is the silverware and utensil drawer. And I had a smaller utensil organizer and then crap was just always messed up. So I found a big, nope, wrong drawer. <laughs> so I found a big silverware organizer that barely fit in here, but it does. And everything has its place now, I love it. I mean, it's something simple, it's something silly, it's just my preference. But now, you know, all the stuff that I use frequently is right here. Everything stays organized. This is the I way see, I like it. We have the no slip pads in there mm -hmm. so the silverware doesn't go all over the place. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to utilize these metal baskets that I found on Amazon in this drawer, which this drawer used to be called the koozie drawer because there was nothing but koozies in there. It's since evolved but there's <laughs> there's still a whole bunch of koozies in here you know from some of our favorite people we got grand design wandering weekend mile marker next i think we got getaway couple anyhow the last drawer that i did one little simple fix to is this one this drawer always kind of i don't know perplexed me because there's so much space up in here yet that you could utilize so all i did was remember the basket i showed you in the bathroom cabinet with chad's stuff in it came with a basket of four i actually have one in the pantry too that i should show you but i just put a few of the things that i use frequently right up on the top and set it on the top so now there's extra space our good friends stacy and phil from yumi and the rv they actually built their own little wooden dividers and have a video on that props to them <laughs> for going that extra step so i think stacy did a lot of that work yeah. she's pretty good like that but i think i forgot to show you guys that i used another one of those plastic caddy organizers in here for all of our nuts and stuff what? nuts my nuts okay is that oh one last little thing that i did that just makes things easier and keeps things less messy i guess simple remember this wire basket it now holds all the lids to all of our st food storage containers leftover containers and now they're not flying all over the place we have a lot of space left over in our cabinets we've got our awesome kona french press here toaster but like down here this is all 
medications. All your, all your meds. All my meds and supplements and stuff. This is the medication corner. But honestly, this kitchen has so much storage space. Look, we still have open spaces here, you know? I mean, for us, one little, st one little shelf here was plenty. But we technically could have another shelf up there. Oh, yeah. There are some things in this kitchen that I would still like to update, modify. I should say I would like the guy behind the camera to do it for me. Bye. Yeah, but you know how <laughs> we talked about, babe, how like the cabinets down here, this is all cleaning supplies. I would love to be able to have trays that slide out so that I can see all the cleaning supplies that are way back in here. And the same thing for the bottom. And, and for the trash can. And for the trash can. Chad's turn. My turn. So this is really, really simple. And this is kind of a little niche sort of idea. Uh, but I got this idea from Todd Henson of Two Beards and a Babe. I figured why not try it out. And you know me, I like to not only try things, I like to be able to prove they work. So let me show you first of all what it is. If your RV's AC is ducted like ours is, ours has this racetrack system that circulates the air through the entire RV. And then you have these vents, right? Well, you've got the racetrack just going by and then a vent underneath and there's nothing really there other than the force of air pressure itself to push the air out of the vents. So you just put these little vent nubbies in there. I call them vent nubbies. That's not what they are. <laughs> Don't go look on Amazon for vent nubbies. They're door stops. The thing you put on the wall for where the handle hits the wall to kind of cushion it. But it's a cool, perfect size little dome that gives the air a bit of disruption and forces it down through the vent. To test that this actually worked, I bought an anemometer. Yes, I like excuses to buy tools. He does. <laughs> the middle and the rear AC are on. I can still feel cold air coming out of here. I am going to put this one back on and leave it open. I already have one of the little things in there, so we will test that one. So I feel air. Yeah, a little bit of air coming out of here. Let's see what kind of speed we get. 0.92. Now let's put the sticky thingy in there. It's just a uh, peel and stick 3M. Smack it right in the middle here. You don't want to push too hard on this ducted system because it's just a cardboard tube or something. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's not like steel or anything. We were 0.92, let's see what we get now. 1.02. It definitely made an improvement. So every little bit of improvement of getting the cold air from up there down here or hot air if it's in the winter, the more help the better, right? Right. I just bought one for each of our vent holes. They're self-adhesive. You pull them off, you stick them in there. It's a really easy project. All you need is a ladder. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Todd. Should we talk about the bonus project that you did like in the very beginning? Oh uh, yeah, while we're over here. Yeah. This project actually did not occur during our shelter in place. This project occurred like our first week, right? Our very first our week, very yeah. Our very first week because poor Daisy didn't like these stairs. They're plastic and her little feet just didn't like the slidiness. So we put this carpet on here and I mean, it's been two and a half years. It needs to be replaced now, I think, for sure. It's still holding up, I think, pretty well for a $12 yeah. cheap Home Depot rug <laughs> yeah. that you got. Yeah, but, I just got a, a real inexpensive throw rug, throw, what would you call it, like a throw rug, kitchen yeah, rug? Yeah, it was just one. It was big enough to cover both steps. Uh -huh. It seemed like a durable sort of uh, work rug, kitchen rug, something like that. Mm -hmm. And these steps have four screws and they pop right off. And all I did was wrap the carpet around it and I cut it to, to fit and also cut some angles in it so it would roll over nicely, stapled it on, screwed right through the carpet back into where it was and... Daisies. And it's been solid. I mean, it, yeah. they haven't slipped or anything. And No, they're getting a little worn. We've got a couple spots here on the edge where it's starting to fray a little bit that I've, I'll have i come by every now and then and just trim it. Mm -hmm. But two and a half years, this, like you said, $17 carpet. Yeah. And it made it just made our stairs a lot nicer for us and for Daisy. When it you, took a minute for Daisy to realize she wasn't going to hurt herself going up and down the stairs after yeah. you did it. Hope you want a tree? She doesn't know that she can get on the steps. Look, look, come on. Come, come on. That's come pitiful. On. That's pitiful. Come on. Wow, that's pretty cool, huh? 
but now she just flies right over the bottom step half the time. She's just yeah. up and down. You want to see her? Hey, Daisy, you want a treat? <gasps> Come here. Oh, boy. Go get it. Come here. Go. 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 <coughs> Come on. Good oh, job. Yeah. Well, let's go this way. Oh, boy. She's, she just skips that last step. So yeah. Fine. You okay. better, you better now, give her a now treat. Now I got to give her a treat. Yeah. Wait for it. Oh. Wait for it. There you Good go. Good girl. That was phase one of our modification slash reorganizing quarantine projects, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, the other ones are pretty big and we're actually still finishing them up. Also, many of you have asked how we organize our basement. And I don't do a lot down there other than the tubs. If you watched our tools video, we did show some of the carabiners and straps that I use. And it's just a simple strap with a carabiner and a D-ring mm -hmm. mounted right up to the aluminum. And that holds power cords, adapters, hoses, um, I think I might even put some down there to hold up chairs while we're traveling. That's but. a good idea. And then clear plastic tubs mm -hmm. for a lot of things. And then your, your separate tubs for the sewer connections and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. So. If you want to see how we organize our tools and how we keep all of that stuff and what we carry, we'll link that down below also. Yes, but I think you should tell them about some of the things that we're going to show them next. Ooh, we have some exciting stuff. He's excited. <laughs> We got some really cool internet upgrades coming and it's gonna be the Mac daddy of internet systems. That's right, a lot of you guys write to us and say, your internet video is really good, but it's a couple years old, what's new? Yeah. We're gonna show you. Yeah, yeah, our answer up until recently has been, we haven't changed it, it's been the same for two and a half mm -hmm. years, but it was time for an update and we're gonna talk about that in that video. I also made a quick repair to our awning lights that I'll share with you. And then there's some plumbing stuff too. Yeah, if you watched our three broken things in two days video, mm -hmm. you saw that we put in a new water pump. Well, a lot of people wrote in, like writing, a lot of people emailed us and commented uh, about there being some comments on that pump on Amazon that the pressure was too high and I measured it and yes, it's a little bit high. So we've done a little bit of things there to try to mitigate that. We're not quite done with that yet, so we're still working on that. Another project we're gonna show you isn't complete yet because we have had what seems like two weeks of rain. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is our back patio. Now, technically, you're not supposed to have that down in the rain. Ours was very, very well sealed. In fact, we've had, against recommendations, ours down almost 24 seven for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And it's it's been fine, but I can see some areas where the seals are starting to, to fade a little bit and we got a little bit of corrosion going on under the paint. So what I'm doing is I am sanding down that entire outside edge and I'm using Flex Seal mm -hmm. on the whole thing. I tested a little corner to make sure it was gonna be okay and not be too rubbery and that's gonna look pretty good. So we have that coming up. Hopefully the rain stops and he can get that finished so mm -hmm. we can get that video out shortly. Yep, so the last thing we're gonna do that was still in the works is some upgrades to our DC wiring for our inverter. And we'll go into the hows and whys when we actually do that video. We're upgrading it from 300 amp capacity to 400 amp capacity for various reasons and you'll find out why in that video. If you have any questions about any of the stuff that we showed you, please feel free to comment below. We'd love to hear what some of your favorite mods that you've done yourself or maybe the easiest things that you've done or some organizing tips because like I said, I'm not very good at it. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and go check out our website, changinglanesrv.com. Bye. Oh, rolling? Mm-hmm, action. Daisy can't find her food. Look at her, she keeps calling. Where's What's the matter, food? Daisy? Where's my food? Let me get your... Am I um, blocking it? Am I blocking it? Let me get your food. No, nope, you Let can't me have it. food block? I'm sorry, you can't have it until I'm done talking. I'll make it quick, okay, Daisy? I know. No. I know. What is, what's the matter? Are you mad? Gonna eat? <laughs> well, let's go inside and see if they fit. Is that recording? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello, people of the internet. This is my basket of pain. <laughs> basket. My basket of like topical pain stuff. And maybe this could be a little daisy cubby hole up here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and stuck him in there, and you know. Why not? That was a good way to end it. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. Okay. Oh, this is the game that you, Daddy likes to play with you. She gets mad. I'm sorry, Daisy. Is your food back there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she made oh, it. She's just going to go around me. She ain't scared.
Hey Daisy, we're filming. She says, but this is playtime. We're filming. Is it playtime? Is it playtime? Over there to see where's my food? Where'd he go? Where's my food? Mommy, pick up your food. I'm sorry. Where, don't look at me. I don't have it. What? I'm